Three Tales of Dark Old Riki, narrated by John Tantalan. Welcome to the world famous Greyfriars Kirkyard. The graveyard, established in 1562, plays host to many famous local dignitaries. Located in the southern edge of Edinburgh Old Town, the site contains many fascinating stories. As you enter the graveyard, confronted with the statue and grave of the legendary Greyfriars Bobby, the heartwarming tale of a dog's devotion to his master even after his death has charmed audiences worldwide. Thousands visit each year to pay respects to the faithful canine who sits proudly at the entrance. However, towards the rear of the graveyard there is something far more sinister. The Covenanters prison, constructed in 1679, located at the back of Greyfriars Kirk. The jail housed more than 1,000 prisoners connected to the Covenanting movement. Many died in prison due to the dreadful, barbaric conditions they endured. One name in particular associated with the story continues to abound today. Sir George Mackenzie, also known as the Bloody Judge, left his mark on Greyfriars. Responsible for the sentencing of many of the Covenanters, Mackenzie left a legacy of a brutal and remorseless character. Heads of those executed adorned the very gates of Greyfriars Kirkyard as a warning of the wrath of the Bloody Judge. After his death in 1691, Sir George Mackenzie buried in the graveyard. His grand mausoleum sits adjacent to the Covenanters prison where so many killed by his judgement. In 1999, a homeless man broke into the Mackenzie tomb and during the night disturbed the grave of the bloody judge. In the darkness of the tomb, he stumbled and fell. He landed in a pit of bones possibly from victims of the plague. The screaming man observed fleeing from the grave by the local groundsman. The man, out walking his dog, claimed that the petrified man had a look that he fled as if his life depended on it. After this terrifying encounter, many more events that are sinister occurred. Visitors of the graveyard have witnessed a strange phenomenon near the Mackenzie tomb in the Covenanters jail. Many have even put claim to being assaulted by what has famously become titled the Mackenzie Poltergeist. A catalogue of scratches, bruising and even bite marks exist from those brave enough to attend one of the Greyfriar ghost walks. The Mackenzie Poltergeist is as active as ever and remains one of the most frightening locations in Edinburgh today. With much recorded activity in the grounds of the graveyard to date, the site is necessary for anyone interested in the paranormal or Edinburgh's dark history. <laughs> Not far from the Greyfriars Kirkyard sits West Bow. The peculiar Z-shaped street leads from the famous grass market. Dating back to 1160, the location remains of a similar spectacle today. Among some of the famous Edinburgh names to occupy West Bow was a Major Thomas Weir. Born in 1599, Major Weir, a member of the Covenanting movement and a decorated military man, lived in the property with his sister Jean. Involved in military action in the 1640s and 50s, Major Weir retired in the 1660s. At the age of 70, Major Weir fell ill. From his sickbed, he began to confess to a secret, sinister life of debauchery. Both of the residents, taken to the toll booth and interrogated, Major Weir and his sister confessed to the involvement of sorcery, bestiality and necromancy. The two accused occultists took to the Greenside leper colony beneath Colton Hill. It was here they would await trial. 
soon after sought and executed at the Galilee between Edinburgh and Leith, now the location of the Shrub Hill Tram Depot. The Major's final words of Let me alone, I will not, I have lived as a beast, I must die as a beast, echoed as he burned alive on the flaming pyre. His staff, thrown onto the pyre, reportedly danced within the flames. Some time later, reports of strange activity within the Major's West Bow property abounded. The property would lie vacant for over a century due to its terrifying reputation. In 1780, an ex-soldier named William Patillo moved into the property with his wife. During the first night in the house, both residents awakened by the supernatural sight of a calf approaching them in bed. The property, now once again vacant, saw strange lights flicker through the night. The sound of enchanted music emulating from within and the sight of the Major's cane adorned with a carved human head danced merrily along West Bow. There were also reports of the Major seen riding in a flaming carriage circulated as well. The address, presumed demolished in 1830, recently discovered as part of the Quaker Meeting House on Number 7 Victoria Terrace. Terrifying spectral sightings of Major Thomas Weir still abound to this day. Regent Terrace, situated in the centre of Edinburgh, sits close to London Road and Holyrood Park. The attractive Georgian architecture complements the appearance of this impressive Edinburgh location. Halfway along the terrace there is a basement flat. In 1979 the property witnessed paranormal activity. A resident by the name of Bill Gibbons lived at the address with three others. The flat although dingy with rising damp in the walls, served well for the group's accommodation. Sometime during that year, Bill noted an atmosphere of gloom throughout with cold temperatures appearing at different times of the day and night. On one occasion, to his terror, a voice cried out the word YES in the kitchen when there was nobody else present at all. Strange sounds, including that of a baby crying, heard through the property. Heavy breathing and items moving by themselves continued to frighten the four residents. The students decided to move the beds into the same room to deal with the strange events. One evening, a warm furry animal jumped onto one of the beds and the student began stroking it and talking to it. When asked to stop and go to sleep, he insisted that he was talking to the cat on his bed. Each of the other flatmates also insisted that the cat was in their bed. When one of them jumped up in a panic and switched the light on, the terrifying reality became clear that the cat was not in the room but sitting in another area of the house. Over the coming months, the sounds of doors banging throughout the night with door handles turning by themselves. The cat, with cloths drawn and teeth bared, refused to enter the room. The students held a seance where they contacted a French trader claiming to be from the future. After one of the party made a joke, the glass flew across the room and plunged into darkness. When the lights returned, the door to the room would not open. Towards the end of the year, all of the students moved out from the property, leaving Bill by himself. A young chef moved in to accompany Bill and one night witnessed for himself. Something grabbed him by the wrist, something cold and furry. The chef attempted to put the light on but while looking through the railing noticed two slitted yellow eyes staring directly at him through the darkness. Not long after the terrifying event, Bill Gibbons decided that enough was enough. Both men packed and left the flat 
on Regent Terrace, never to return. <laughs>